Millions of new businesses are launching around the country. And many of these businesses are being run by new entrepreneurs, people who might not be familiar with the accounting side of a business. So we thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about setting your accounting systems up for success with Cassie Sacking. Cassie is a money mindset and business management coach. She helps business owners kill the hustle and make a profit. And as a soul-centered financial and money mindset coach, she's also a dedicated wife and mother to four children. In her early days, she applied her skills and education by launching a successful seven-figure daycare business. Now she teaches other women to scale their mindset and their income. Cassie, welcome to the Small Business Matters podcast. Hi, Gary. So nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the, the foundation side of, of, of setting up a business. I mean, there are, there are a number of steps to doing that, but a foundational step in any business is figuring out how to track revenue. Can, can you talk for a little bit about the difference between cash-based and accrual-based accounting methods and why it's important to pick the right one, perhaps include a few examples of businesses that book revenue in each method? Sure, absolutely. And you know, to put a little disclaimer in here, I am not an accountant, but I can explain the basics. And I think that should give us all hope, especially if you're starting a new small business. You don't have to have certain degrees. You just have to have the right kind of knowledge. And I love that we're talking about that today to support you better in starting your business or you know growing your business. So cash basis is really the most straightforward way. It's you know you only record something like a income when it's actually received into your bank account. And uh, you know we use this in small businesses a lot of times service based businesses do very well with cash basis accounting. Whereas accrual accounting is like you know money is accounted for before it's received, you know Maybe there's, you know, you have 30 days to pay it. It's an aging kind of receipt, but in accrual accounting, you you process it as though it's already received. You may not have it in hand yet. Um, so, and same thing like expenses for accrual, you're already recording them before they're actually paid out. Um, and the reason like for that is because you may have, like I recommend this for, for you know, product-based businesses that they have to purchase out a lot of things ahead, you know, in terms of inventory tracking, accrual method is really great for that because you have all these upfront expenses, but then it might show over a long-term, you know, revenue projection. So I know if you're also gonna get ready to sell your business, that accrual is a great way to show a potential interested buyer who there's a long-term, you know, strategy for, you know, you know, future income coming in and it can show it right away. So that it's not just so up and down, you know, so cash accounting can, tends to be a, a bit of a pendulum because you're waiting for that money to come in. So it becomes very important to have your revenue on point and your follow-up methods to get all the, the, the revenue in that you can during that before the months close. Mm -hmm. um, at Experian, you know, we, we try to emphasize the importance of maintaining separate bank accounts for business and personal and Commingling of funds can spell trouble. What, why is it such a taboo for a business to do it? And why is a, a dedicated bank account so important? That's such a good question because I think a lot of it is we have these feelings around the taboo, right? Oh, this is not a good thing, but why? Why do we why is it not a good thing? Is it just because, you know, on the most basic of levels, it's just hard to track and hard to sort through at tax time? That's definitely a big piece of it, but really, really, you know, you want to have your your funds kept inside of your LLC or your business. Maybe it's an S corp. It really protects your assets, like your personal assets, in case of any legal actions against your company. So really, it's the idea of if you're having a hard time, like separating and like, eh, it's not a big deal. I'll just sort through it later. Just want to encourage you to make sure that um, you want to protect your own personal assets that way. That's really the biggest reason um, that might motivate any business owner to keep their their personal funds separate from their business funds as well. Yeah, and that includes tracking all of your receipts, right, and and filing them in the right place. I mean, that's that's actually a, a, an easy area where you can slip up, right? And um, would you recommend you know separate credit cards uh, uh, to go with the banks? Absolutely. Um, I'm probably a little bit too account happy when it comes to uh, my business accounts. I have a different account for a lot of different reasons. I use them like buckets and it's just because my human nature, I'd rather just see what I actually have for these particular purposes. Um, but I do recommend 
having a credit card because obviously there's there's an easier way to protect you in case there's fraud. It's not just taking it out of your bank account, your actual cash flow. Um, but you know, I I practice having a you know a no debt business, so I pay we pay off the credit cards every week. So it's it's flexible, and obviously when you're tracking those, you track them according to QuickBooks standards and you know accounting for everything properly. It doesn't really matter ultimately what bank account you use. That's more just for cash flow purposes. But you just want to make it easy on yourself, right? Like how can I make it easier on myself as a business owner? I even, you know, um, so that I don't mix them up in my wallet, I write, you know, I take my credit card and write like business <laughs> across with a, a Sharpie because, you know, we're distracted, right? I like pull it out and like, oh, that's not my business card. Okay, you know, it, you know, sometimes we have to do these silly things to help ourselves stay in line for tax tax time. Yeah, for sure. Well, and from a business credit standpoint too, I mean, the 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 advantages are pretty obvious, but maybe not so apparent to, to the new entrepreneur. Um, if you can start showing a history of paying the credit card bill, paying that business credit card under the name of the business, uh, this um, triggers to the bureau uh, that there's history going on and there's a business uh, that's functioning there. It does take a little while for that personal credit uh, transition to to happen where you can rely solely on the on the credit of the business um, but in the early days if you can just at least establish that separation uh, it's, it's a good idea um, now let's talk a little bit about tracking and systems right so there's a lot of accounting programs out there what what should a business owner or entrepreneur know about choosing the right accounting package does the business owner need to know all about accounting software to pick the right one how how, how do you make a the right choice yes you know that's so important and like i said you want to make it easy on yourself and find a software that is very intuitive that you can follow along and uh, i recommend quickbooks they do have a very low entry level let's say your sole proprietor starting out they have a very low uh, threshold like a monthly fee for that but it's super helpful because most accountants will use that's kind of the gold standard they'll use QuickBooks and you can easily share it with them so they have access um, so they can update it without you having to like print out massive files or you know tons of statements and everything luckily everything is so electronic now that you know you can just upload your um, you know all the information the bank statements to them as needed but I do recommend QuickBooks um, and then there's other there are other softwares out there that may be free, but the whole point of it is to track what you're doing, track the activity of the business, so that you're always on top of what's happening in your business and not waiting till you know months end to go back and check. And the best way is just to get the right software. We all need software for our businesses, you know, even for simple things like emails, you know, the QuickBooks or any other type of, um, you know tracking software for your business finances is just highly recommended from the gate, like right from the get go, just start, you know, I've gone into other people's businesses and we've tried to go back in time and update everything. And it just takes a lot more time and sorting. And it's not likely you'll remember what happened in the business a whole year ago or two or three, you know, so just start right away, even if it's super simple and you need to get help with that. It's, it's just really important mm -hmm. to do. So I'm sure they, they must offer training on that. I mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm a marketing guy, right? So I'm not sure I would know exactly how to set up, you know, a QuickBooks file from for my business. Is it complicated? It isn't. Actually, you know, I've used QuickBooks for almost 20 years now, way back in the old days when it was just on the desktop only. And <laughs> like I'm dating myself here but now everything is you know I recommend online version and they have in the past couple of years they've actually really improved the software and the usability of it so they'll even preset up for you these generalized business you know types of accounts and types of classifications that you can choose and like I said I do recommend you know using an accountant that they could help support you in that and uh, depending on the complication or you know how complex your business might be and depending on if it's cash or accrual um, but these things they do take some time 
And there's so many support YouTube videos. I won't even recommend which one, but there are so many you can go online and just watch the basics. And it, it takes time in the beginning, but like anything, it's worth it because then you're saving yourself so much hassle at tax time and also knowing what your, your business profitability is as well. So yeah. important. So how can business owners keep a good pulse on the health of their business and how can good bookkeeping aid them? And are there core reports the owner should be familiar with? Uh, can you explain the essential reports? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the main thing that people need to remember is just staying on top of tracking, keeping up with your bookkeeping, whether that's paying someone to do it. Um, there are a lot of people who do it remotely now, which is great. Or you know, doing it yourself, I would recommend doing it weekly at the longest. I tend to do it probably every few days and update the books and make sure that you know there's no fraud going on or you know the money that I'm surprised about or anything like that. But ma basically, tracking every dollar on a weekly basis will help. Like, just don't wait till the end of the month when it's kind of a history report and you're looking back like, oh no, what happened three weeks ago? Um, because what'll happen is as you're tracking live, you'll be able to change the behavior in your business, right? You'll make a little bit different decisions. And part of the tracking process that I do recommend is, you know, running a PL, which is a profit and loss statement. It's all the revenue that comes in based on category and then all the, the expenses that go out based on category. So as you're tracking, you'll see what's coming in and out and you'll be able to make sure that that those things are correct, first of all, and that, you know, do you want to be spending that money based on the revenue of that week? Um, some people are, are, you know, a little bit low margin type of businesses, and that's fine, but you have to make sure that you're really on top of that. And then, um, you know, make those business behavior changes based on your projection for the following week or the next four weeks. And, you know, a lot of times we think we're kind of just, um, you know, we have to go with the wind and whatever is happening to us. And we're a little bit like, ah, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to make more revenue. But really, we have so much more control than we realize. And part of that is this this process of doing the weekly P&L and then, of course, monthly. And then um, also just making sure that you look at your balance sheet, making sure that, you know, your debts, all these things are adding up and making sense to you based on what you know is happening in your business. And that's the way to keep a good pulse on it. The numbers don't lie and you know business owners who are really good at um, not just making a profit or making more revenue and we always think like gonna make more money make more money but actually on the other end you know how are you tracking those expenses is really a great way to catch the money without it kind of going out the back door because I always say you can make a million dollars but if you spend a million and one you know it's not it's not a good business, no. you know, it's not working for you, right? So I think that that's really a great way is just staying on top of it weekly and just knowing what's going on in your business. So when the pandemic hit before any relief was announced, many small businesses had to stay afloat by dipping into reserves. Can you talk about what cash reserves are and how they are set up in the accounting system and, and why they're so important? Mm. You know what? Um, I always emphasize, and obviously it's going to be showing up in your accounting system because you're tracking all your revenue. Um, and how I do it is because I focus a lot on cash flow and because cash flow is the lifeblood of any business, right? Um, and it's very important to know that you have enough money to make it to the next payday or revenue you know, uh, deposit. So I do really, obviously everything will be tracked through your QuickBooks and your accounting system. But I always recommend putting aside a top line percentage from the top line revenue, like every dollar that comes into your business, setting aside like three to 5%. Even if you feel like you can't do that yet, start with 1% and then try to build it up from there because it's a behavior switch. So start it, you know, putting away money. And I know prior to the pandemic, we all thought, eh, we'll put some away. And it was kind of like a little bit more here and there, if there's windfalls. But now um, I know my business partner and I are very um, purposeful in how much we put away simply because we did have to use a lot of our reserve money and it did help us. And I know a lot of businesses in our area shut down and didn't reopen. And I'm really grateful for that, honestly. But you know, being proactive and not just waiting until, oh, what's my profit margin? What's my, you know, what's left over? Um, that's you'll never save that way, right? And I think that that's so important to just start from the top 
and just set it aside. And that's, you know, that's where I get a little crazy with all my accounts, move money all the time. And I do that on a weekly basis so that, you know, we make sure that every dollar is split up into different ways and we, we proactively do that. So I'm definitely into more like habits and behaviors and like making things easy. And then of course it's all tracked in QuickBooks so that you can see on your balance sheet how much you have saved aside. It's interesting. It's, it's um, how that has changed how you look and, and your particular industry category. I mean, daycare centers, they closed, uh, yeah. right? But, um, and it was really hard on, on that particular industry. I mean, was that any other learnings from that that, that, that you took uh, that you're kind of applying in your business today? Um, well, I would say the biggest learning is my personal uh, growth and my humility level, right? I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I got this, you know, and I know how to run a business. And we're actually coming up on our 20th year in 2025. 20, uh, so it's exciting, right? That's a long-term business. Um, I'm really proud of that, but how I show up and how I treat other people, how I manage the team, um, I'm much more appreciative. And what that shows, it comes out in the way we give bonuses to our team members. Um, and, you know, that's part of how we manage the, the profits as well. Like we share it and we we look at our team, not that we didn't before, but I so much more like my heart has kind of changed in a lot of good ways that I just see them as like, wow, if we didn't have these people, we just wouldn't have a business. And we just I don't know, we love our team so much and I'm so grateful and I can't show enough gratitude to them. And I actively look for ways to show that and able to do that because of this practice of you know, weekly updating, weekly transferring of funds and automating some of those behaviors so that I don't have to be worried about cash flow all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to be scrambling, you know, for, oh my gosh, how are we going to make it? It's just like money, obviously it's on our minds, but it's not because of behavior changes, we're able to really focus on the team better and growing the team, investing in the team, getting them the right training and the resources they need as well. So. I know that's not exactly about money, but it really is because money, where we put our money shows kind of where our hearts are, right? And I think it's really important to invest in the team as well. Well, right. And I think you're, you're investing in the longevity of your business at the end of the day, because if you have um, a happy team, well, I heard Richard Branson say something very profound once where he said, um, if you take care of your team, your team will take care of your customers. And that will take care of everything else. If you get that right you're, with your team, um, you're going to have a successful business. And you say that your anniversary, 20th anniversary next year? I mean, yeah. you're, in, you're, you're doing something right there. I mean, a lot of businesses <laughs> don't make it beyond two years. So congratulations on Thank you. It, it, I can't believe it's going to be 20 years. I, I'm still in shock and I'm, I'm just really grateful, really grateful. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we record this interview, it's tax time in the US. What are the reports that are going to make for a, a stress-free uh, tax filing if you're a business owner? You know, I think a lot of it has to do with not just reports, like we talked about the P&L, that's super important. I do recommend at tax time, to run a you know annual PL looking back over 2023 or whatever year this is, that you're looking back from the prior year and you're doing a month over month report so that you're looking at each month in a column and then do the full annual report, you know, obviously the summary, and then upload that for your accountant as well as giving them access to your books. And so those are like the basic, you know, foundational, you're definitely running a PL and then send them the balance sheet also from the prior year. Um, but beyond that, organizing yourself and your receipts, I know, Gary, you mentioned the receipts before and scanning them all in, organizing them by month. You know, I mean, I know it seems like, eh, what a hassle, but I promise you, if you ever get audited, it'll just be like, oh, here, click on this Google folder. You know, it's all here from this year, or these years, 
organize yourself, you know, do a whole year and then do like subfolders by month. That's kind of what we do. And making sure that those don't get lost because, you know, floods can happen, your paperwork can go missing, making sure to really make everything into a digital version of that so that it's super easy to find and pull up, um, especially, and then we, you know, share those and upload those to uh, our accountant as well as needed. So I think, you know, making sure you run the right reports, but then also tracking and scanning all your receipts, um, just making things easy for your accountant to be able to sort through those things will really help looking for as many tax deductions as you can uh, within legal limits, of course, and those boundaries you want to stay in integrity, um, making sure that you're taking advantage of those, um, you know, anything like 401k or anything else that you can do to support your team or yourself as a business owner is just super important to get as many tax deductions as possible too. Yeah, yeah and have a good office scanner, have one that's easy to to use you just drop them in and have it appear in a folder so you can uh, yes, catalog yes. it um, There's also, you could get a, like a free i think use like cam scanner as well that's a free app that you can use um with your phone oh that's, wow that's yeah well my dad always told me son always pay play to your strengths have you met business owners who are hands-on in running their business but just not interested in the accounting side of things and how do you work with these kinds of entrepreneurs you know what i think i i, I really feel that because a lot of business owners are doing their passion right they're they're expressing their creativity through their business maybe if they're creating a you know a service package or maybe you're a coach or you have a product-based business you've always dreamed of and it just gets very overwhelming very quickly um I do recommend that if you're not able to take the time or to uh, have the desire at all, I do recommend hiring a bookkeeper, someone who can, you know, keep track of your books, making sure that you're doing it properly so you don't have to go back over years and redo everything. Um, and then hire an accountant, of course. But I think a lot of people get stuck. Gary with cash flow because you know you can do everything right with your accounting you can make sure that you know uh, all the percentages add up to a hundred percent but then how do you pay for things in the right timing how do you have enough for payroll to pay your uh, either payroll or you have like you know contractors in your business um, and I think a lot of times cash flow is really what is the the sticking point for most business owners so that's what I love to do is help people just get more cash flow in their business, find money in your business. If you've been operating more than a year, you probably it's time to go through and kind of do a cleanup and go uh, find more money and, and make some decisions for yourself. And I recommend doing that every quarter. Um, but that's what I love to help with is I know how to do bookkeeping, but I also how do we how do we be, change our behavior around keeping more cash flow in our business is just super important. So all about cash flow. Any final advice for business owners who might feel yeah, maybe a little overwhelmed or unprepared for entrepreneurship? Gosh, I, this is more of an inspirational moment for me because I think, you know, I do not have an MBA. I am a mom of four. I have my education degree. I am not an accountant but I love what I do and I found ways to do it. Although it probably took me longer in some cases, I probably should have reached out for help sooner. Um, but I learned and I, I grew and I changed my mindset. And I, if I can do it, I feel like anyone can do it, right? I mean, I feel as though don't get discouraged. There's so much help out there. And, you know, there's a lot of resources for people and, um, and just to realize that if you have that passion to start your business, if you're really, really focused on it and you're excited about it, you can always find a way to make it work. You can always find that way. If you get overwhelmed, take a break, take a breath, restart tomorrow, like give yourself grace, but keep going forward. And, and that's really, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I'm just the person who just refused to give up. And I'm like, okay, start over. Like really? The more resiliency you can build, the longer you'll stay in business, for sure. Awesome. Well, Cassie, this has been super helpful. Where can our listeners find out more about you? I always tell everyone to find me on Instagram. I'm actually at Profit Passion Academy on Instagram. 
and all my information is there. There's the links there and you can find a little bit more about me and how to find more money in your business. And, you know, there's a lot of free offers that I have in there for people. So I would love to help you do that to help you stay afloat and keep your business going. Right. That's my passion to help people in business. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for coming on Small Business Matters.